I want to help you accomplish anything or at least get a great start on it in just 10 minutes. Uh, and I know that's a really presumptive promise, but hear me out for a second. So uh, I need you to get a timer like this. This is a timer you see it's actually set for 10 minutes there. And I can, I can include a link in the description to where you can pick one up on Amazon. Any kitchen timer will do though. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to think first about what your biggest project is, maybe something that is giving you some resistance, that's giving you some trouble, uh, that, that you need to get started, that you need to accomplish that maybe you're not doing right now. And I don't know if this is like a creative project. I don't know if it's your art. I don't know if it's your copywriting. I don't know if it's some other writing. I don't know if it's actually picking up the phone and calling prospects or calling clients. I don't know what it is. But I know that there's something that you can do that you need to get started with that right now you're not. And if you actually get started with it and you do it, you're going to uh, you're, you're going to move much closer towards your big goals. And we all have these things. And the more that any of us achieve and the greater vision that we set for ourselves, the more we can imagine what we want our life to be that's a bigger picture than what it is right now, the more of these things we actually have. And the challenge is not necessarily in getting them done in most cases. The challenge is really in getting them started. And yes, we, we need to get them done. But for most of us, let's be honest, if we don't get our projects started, we'll never get it done. And most often, uh, our, our, our biggest breakthroughs are waiting for us on, on the other side of getting started, right? Um, so I got this idea from this book and I... You know, if, if you've been following me at all, if you're a, a student of copywriting, of direct response, you've probably heard of the Eugene Schwartz 33 minute, 33 second timer trick. Uh, you've probably heard of Pomodoro as a productivity method where you set a timer for 25 minutes and then you take a break for five minutes and 25 and take a break for five minutes. And maybe you've even seen my video on, on Mel Robbins on the five second rule where uh, you just count to five to get started at anything. But even that, sometimes you uh, you aren't able to stick with it. So what what I found, I actually got this book from, uh, from the author. He sent it to me and I went through it rather quickly because it's a really good book in, in the vein of The War of Art, uh, which I did a video on recently, the, the Stephen Pressfield book. And it's all about getting started. It's all about breaking through resistance. It's all about uh, how to how to achieve your goals by taking action. And he has this 10 minute timer trick. So what you do is you actually just set the timer for 10 minutes and you hit go. And you might wonder what happens at the end of those 10 minutes. I'll tell you in a second. But first, realize that during those 10 minutes, what you need to do is you need to do whatever it is you need to get started on this big project, on this art, on this creative project, on this, uh, you know, reaching out to clients, whatever is causing you resistance, whatever is going to create the breakthrough in your life, you get started. And while that timer is running, while it's counting down from 10 minutes to zero, you are not supposed to do anything else. Now, here's where I find this to be really unique from the Mel Robbins five second rule, as well as Pomodoro and the Eugene Schwartz timer trick. Uh, what David said in his book, David Kadavi is the author. What David said in his book is that if you have a project, a creative project that truly inspires you, what's probably going to happen is you have a lot of resistance to getting started. But if you actually stop it at 25 minutes, if you stop it at 33, 33, if you stop it wherever, you're going to you're going to have that same trouble getting started after that break and you're going to have the same trouble getting started after that break. And if you really are into this project once you get started, you should actually maintain that flow because oftentimes great creative work only comes in the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth hour of being truly creative where, you, where you're, you're completely in the zone. You're completely thinking about it, consumed by it, and you're really moving forward on that creative project. And so you don't want to stop at 25 minutes. You don't want to stop at 33 minutes. And frankly, with the Mel Robbins five second trick, as great as it is for something like getting out of bed, for creative work, 
it's easy to get distracted within two minutes, right? It's easy to get distracted within five minutes, but maybe if you can make it to 10 minutes, you're going to, you're going to start to tap into that flow. You're going to start to tap into that energy. You're going to start to just be in the zone and not worry about all the distractions. And so David's trick is to set a timer for 10 minutes and hit go and stay focused on that for at least 10 minutes. You're not allowed to check Facebook. You're not allowed to check your email. You're not allowed to do all those million and one distracting things that are available to you. You just focus on this, this initiative, this, this creative project, whatever it is. And so you do that for 10 minutes and then you keep going and you keep going. And when you run out of energy, sure, you can take a break. If you get to lunchtime or after lunchtime and, and you need some food, go grab some food and then come back and then set the timer for 10 minutes again and start. Just get started. Just get momentum. Just start moving forward because that's often our biggest barrier, our biggest roadblock to achieving the success we want is the willingness to start and then start and then start and then start. Now, I actually have uh, three more smaller ideas that, that build on this from David's book, and I'm going to share them with you in a minute. But if you like this video, be sure that you like it. If, if you, uh, if you want to share how you're going to apply this, how you're, how you're going to put it to work, feel free, leave a comment, share the video with others who you think might find it valuable and make sure that you subscribe to get more content like this, especially if you're a, a, a marketer, a copywriter, a internet business builder, or some other high achiever who's focused on growing your career, especially if you are connected to marketing at all, because I put out a lot of valuable content around those topics. Now, um, when you've, when you've started this 10 minute timer, you don't necessarily need to be great. And uh, in, in David's book, one of the things that he talks about is that you have permission to suck. You barf it out for 10 minutes and then you clean it up. You barf it out. You clean it up. You get your first draft down as fast as possible. And then you spend your time, you spend your creative energy editing, making it work, making it work, making it work, uh, you know, taking things out that are not working, editing things that, that need to be edited, uh, you know, adjusting your brush strokes on the painting, whatever it is, you can always course correct along the way. You can always make it better once it's out of your head, but you are, it's critically important that you have this permission to suck, to put out a bad first draft and then to work through it and get better. And then the last idea, the, the idea that I think, also think is really valuable here that I wanted to share with you is, is something that, that David calls the fortress fallacy. Now, of course, you can, you can dig into the book more, you can get more information on it in there, but uh, I, I feel like this is a really good observation on human nature because um, if a, a lot of times as we're thinking about these big creative projects, the ones that are giving us resistance, we're imagining in our head like this big fortress that we have to penetrate. Right. Um, and we're imagining what the finished business is going to look like. We're imagining what the finished uh, you know, novel is going to look like or book is going to look like or sales letter is going to look like. We're imagining this finished pro product and it is uh, it's gi gigantic. It's it is a fortress that is designed to withstand us. And um, this is a fallacy, and it's a fallacy that prevents you from getting started. Instead, you should perhaps think of it like a brick, and you're going to go and you're going to stack another brick on, and you're going to stack another brick on, and you're going to do that while the 10-minute timer is running, and you're going to start stacking bricks because it's not going to turn into that fortress. It's not going to turn into that big success. It's not going to turn into whatever this is that you imagine is the finished product unless you stack it brick by brick by brick by brick, and you do the work to do that, and then you... you reach those creative goals. You reach those creative breakthroughs that you're looking for. And this applies, you know, again, whether you're, you're making phone calls, it's not about whether you close this deal. It's about whether you made the call and the next one and the next one and the next one, or if you're writing a sales letter or whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your, your creative project is, it starts with this 10 minutes where you have permission to suck just because you are moving, you're moving forward. You just barf it out and then you can clean it up later and recognize that it's not a fortress yet. It's not this big impenetrable thing yet. 
It may be by the time you're done with it, but right now it's a brick and you need to stack another brick and you need to stack another brick and you need to build that fortress and you're going to do it 10 minutes at a time. So again, if, if you like the video, like it, feel free to comment, share it with people who, who would find it interesting and importantly, subscribe to me on YouTube. Also, I'm at BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. I actually uh, produce a lot more content, a lot more valuable content for copywriters, marketers, business builders, uh, high achievers, anybody who wants to live a happier, a healthier, a more impactful and prosperous life. I produce content to help you with those things, especially in the fields of, of entrepreneurship and marketing. Um, and so if you'd like to join me on that mission uh, to live a happier, healthier, more prosperous and impactful life for yourself, be sure to join me there and check out the links in the description for more. Again, um, this has been ideas. These have been ideas from the heart to start by David Kadavi. And I do want to thank David. He actually reached out to me. I don't normally accept these requests, but he reached out to me and he said, hey, Roy, uh, no, no obligation, but would you be interested in, in looking at my book? I like some of the other content you've put out, including your content on the War of Art. And I said, sure, I'll look at it. And it was, it was no obligation to produce this video, but I thought that the content was good enough that I would bring it to your attention. I would share it with you because uh, it, it truly is valuable content. It's a valuable book. It's also available on Audible. That's how I got through it uh, actually really quickly. I listened to it on Audible and it's a good listen. And uh, again, I'm Roy Furr. This is for Breakthrough Marketing Secrets Video Friday, and I'll see you again in your next video. Bye.